There's so many beautiful um, phrases that I've heard in this training and the, the beauty of the phrases and the suggestions that I hear in this training are that they're not just they're not just things that sound nice, although they do. The beauty of the phrases and suggestions that I hear in this training are or is that I see more and more that they're just simply accurately describing my experience as it already is. And so the beauty is the recognition of just how accurate um, the say it, suggestions and phrases are. And so there was one I heard recently that was um, I heard before, I hadn't heard for a while, and that was um, one simple change in the use of the mind reveals its natural perfection. And um, well, what is that one simple change? And that one simple change is just for short moments. Um, we rest naturally and we allow everything to be exactly as it is. And these, this is a completely radical approach to the way that we use our mind when compared with the conventional approach. So with the conventional approach to the way that we use our mind, <clears throat> what we're meant to be doing is managing our experience. And that managing takes lots of different forms. Um, quite commonly, trying to cultivate positive experiences, thoughts, emotions and sensations, or um, trying to get rid of the negative experiences, or at least minimise them. And trying to manage our experience so it fits into the learned categories we have about what is good and what is positive, and trying to avoid the learned categories we've had about what's negative or what we shouldn't be experiencing or thinking or feeling. And, um, and in the suggestion that in a short moment we just allow everything to be as it is, we stop either of those activities, either trying to cultivate positive or manage or eradicate the negative. We just relax completely. And um, we can just stop describing, just allow everything to be as it is. And, and in that instant, we recognize that there is a brightness, there is an alertness, there is an intelligence that's naturally present, and it is actually the basis of everything that we think, everything we feel, everything we experience, physical sensations, it doesn't matter what the label is. And so the one simple change is that rather than trying to manage or control or analyze or put into these learned categories of um, descriptive frameworks, what's going on for us, we just relax and allow everything to be as it is. We don't actually need to do anything with anything that's appearing. And this is so radical and so revolutionary that um, I know for me at the beginning that suggestion, it was, um, it was a bit of a shock actually. I was being told that all of the efforting, all of everything I'd been trying to do in my life the accumulating of knowledge so that um, I would better understand what was going on, um, the tr efforting to create a life that I thought was going to make me happy and make me permanently happy, the um, desire to understand the nature of reality, all of these activities um, were just completely unnecessary and that it was a big shock. It was so challenging to hear that I didn't need to do all of those things. And um, so the beauty of the suggestion that I didn't need to try and encompass all of that immediately, but very practically and very simply, I could approach it one moment at a time. So just for one short moment, I could just stop all of the descriptions. And that would include all of the, dis dis all of the descriptions about me needing to do anything to access the openness of intelligence. And that could include subtle things that I still thought I might need to do, like I need to surrender to the data stream. I need to, um, I need to, that's a still a very subtle um, idea of needing to do something. And what I'm needing to do now is to surrender to it. Instead, we can keep it even simpler than that. I can just relax completely, relax the need to describe anything relax the need to even think that I need to surrender to it. That's just another layer of trying to do something. Because that perceptual openness, it's already the basis of all of your experience. 
And so every time you just relax completely, rest naturally, stop describing, it's instantaneously obvious. In that instant of stopping describing, what you're doing is um, just giving yourself space to notice that that perceptual openness, that brilliance of mind, that is already the basis of everything you're thinking, feeling or sensing, is actually the case. It's naturally present. And it's inseparable from whatever you are thinking, feeling or sensing. And it's only through the data that we have the opportunity to recognize open intelligence. So data are the dynamic energy of this open intelligence. They are the intelligence opening and pouring forth its dynamic potency. And when we stop describing, then in an instinctive and direct way, we're able to utilize the data in the way that will be of most benefit to ourselves and other people. And that, for me, that idea of benefit was very difficult to comprehend. Um, and I tried to comprehend and work it out and think about it. Well, how can that all be of benefit? And what about the negative descriptions and da da da? And actually, what I needed to do was to apply the same suggestion there. And rather than trying to now begin to analyze and work out how does open intelligence work and how does short moments work, actually to apply a short moment and relax completely there and allow that data stream also just to be exactly as it is. And each time I do that, intelligence just naturally opens up. Everything is seen with increasing clarity and there is an innate capacity to know what to do, what to say, how to act, how to spend our time that will be of most benefit to ourselves and other people. And it's, a, it's a, like a journey of discovery, a journey of acclimatization into seeing that this is actually who we are and that this is so innate this is so natural to us that we don't need any of the conceptual frameworks, any of the learned ideas about who we are, about what other people are, about what the world is, to access this natural beneficial intelligence. It is who we are, so all we do is rest for short moments and allow that to become increasingly obvious. And the only way to become sure about whether that's true or not is not by thinking about it, that will just lead to more thinking about it, but to test it out. And for me, this was a, a wonderful um, adventure. It was an adventure in testing out what it was like for me to rely on ever-opening intelligence in my everyday life, rather than collapsing into all of the descriptions about what was going on. And just bringing it back one short moment at a time and allowing that openness of intelligence to become increasingly more obvious. And that, that's just what I did. I tested it out and I carried on around my day and you know, dealing with everything that you deal with in your day, other people, thoughts about this, that, memories, sudden rushes of emotion, um, strange sensations in the body and, and whatever was going on for me, I used it as an opportunity to test out what will happen just right now with whatever the current moment perception is if I rela relax the descriptions and just allow it to be as it is. What, what happens when I do that? And um, so I set off around my day and just testing out short moments and it, it was just incredible for me the, the difference that this one simple change in the use of the mind made. Um, I found that I became firstly much more comfortable with my own um, thoughts and emotions and sensations, um, the thoughts about myself, the uh, experiences of the day, just seeing more and more I could relax and allow them to be as they are. And when I did that, there was an immediate sense of ease, there was a sense of spaciousness, there was a, um, a clearer perspective on everything that was going on. So rather than being only caught up in these descriptions and then that description and then this description there was just this openness where I could see all of the descriptions and see them as indivisible or inseparable from this vastness of intelligence from this indivisible vast expanse that was intelligent and it was experiencing everything as it was and, um, and as I become more comfortable with my own experience 
all of the time and energy that I'd put into trying to manage my experience, to try and fit it into these categories about, I had, they learned categories about how it should look and what would make me happy and what would make me unhappy. I began to see that actually a lot of those things weren't as fixed or as solid or as true as I had assumed that they were. And the more I identified open intelligence as the basis of any idea, any concept, any belief system, then the clearer I was on how much power it actually had over me. And the more I returned to open intelligence, the more I discovered that what was stable about me wasn't dependent on any of these descriptions. It wasn't affected by any of them, like, um, like a mirror isn't affected by any of the reflections that appear within it. The mirror is completely wide open, clear and stable, regardless of what is reflected in it. And I saw that more and more, each time I allowed everything to be as it was, that the stability was the openness within which everything was occurring. All I needed to do was to identify that and return to it, one short moment at a time, very simple. And I continued on with this practice and the results continued to um, become more and more evident. I found that there was now increasing access in this stability in relating <clears throat> with other people. So previously my experience of relating with other people had been based solely on my descriptions. Uh, my descriptions about them, my descriptions about what I thought about them, what I felt about them, how they made me feel. And that is the, the basis of the relating and um, it was always up and down. My opinions and feelings about people were changing all of the time. As I discovered that the basis for all of those descriptions, without exception, was the same openness of intelligence and I began to shift the basis of the relating from the ever-changing descriptions into the recognition of those descriptions as inseparable from open intelligence, completely stable, always present, then the basis of the relating changed from being one that was just up and down and up and down to one that was the same stable basis, completely open-hearted relating that wasn't dependent on the thoughts, emotions and sensations of, of the moment. And this relates directly to this um, question about love. And it's great to reflect on that and I see that more and more my experience of just everyday living is one that's pervaded by I mean, I could call it love, but I can, it, there's just so many confused ideas around that. For me, it's just open-heartedness would be a sort of simpler term in a way. But yeah, you could definitely call it love as well. It, it's um, just finding that actually that is my default setting, that's my natural condition, is one of complete open-heartedness. And it was all the emphasis and the focus on the ideas that I learned about what my thoughts and emotions and sensations meant and how they meant that I needed to change the way that I related. Um, so if I liked someone, I needed to behave in a certain way. If I didn't like someone, I'd have to behave in a certain way. If I was attracted to someone, that meant I had to behave in this way. If I was feeling... Um, tired, <clears throat> then I had to behave in a certain way. If I was feeling happy, then I had to behave in a certain way. And actually, these are just limitations. These are just learned limitations that I try and squeeze my experience and my identity into. And it's impossible. It's like trying to squeeze the sky into one space. Actually, the sky is vast and limitless. And this is the nature of our mind, and this is the nature of our experience. It's the same thing. We can't find an edge or a boundary. We can't say where it begins or where it ends. It's totally open-ended and dynamic, pouring forth this incredible display. And so all I do is return to the complete perceptual openness, the basis of everything again and again, allowing everything to be as it is. And this natural condition, this native state of open intelligence, of open-hearted relating to myself and other people becomes more and more obvious in all life circumstances. 
and it's just a complete delight. And it's, <clears throat> it's actually really powerful to have the opportunity to just reflect on and see how that's changed for me. And I was so caught up in my descriptions about what my experience was that I very rarely was able to access that complete open-heartedness. And I thought that to access it, I needed to sort those descriptions out. I needed to understand them, I needed to get rid of them, I needed to bring other ones in. But to discover that it was completely innate and I could access it in this simple way, this one simple change in the use of the mind, just incredible. Totally incredible, life-changing. And so, so simple. Not, not difficult, not something that needs to be achieved in the future once I've done this or done that. It's an immediate, instantaneous recognition of the way that things actually are. And then just resting naturally as that openness. So it's so simple and yet so profound. And um, to have the opportunity to be with other people that are also practicing this, to have access to a trainer where if things come up for me that I find very challenging to be, to allow to be as they are, even for a short moment, and to clarify and open those up with, with him, it's just incredible. And then the texts that, these texts are so powerful that when you read them, the complete open-heartedness of everything is all that you see, inseparable from all of the descriptions, but to have a text that just elicits and ignites that recognition, this is like the, the greatest treasure that I've ever found. More valuable than, than anything I could imagine. Because it's, it's knowing, in my own experience, the actual nature of reality. That's just incredible. And to see that the more I practice it, the more obvious and the more assurance I have in that. And it increases inexhaustibly. And then as that increases, what is revealed is this power of great benefit. And it's not something that needs to be cultivated or contrived because it's so natural and innate. But what we get the opportunity to do here is to train up that capacity to be of great benefit with our mind, our body, our speech, our qualities and our activities. Open intelligence is already obvious. All it takes is the recognition of that and the settling into actually what that means to live as open intelligence. And it's, um, I was always interested in philosophy and intellectual pursuits and I still enjoy them. But compared with living as open intelligence, they're like, uh, it's like, I think it's, I have the same interest in them that I have as, I was just, I don't know why I was thinking of like a, a child's toy, like a spinning top or something. You know, you sort of spin a top and it spins round and it looks quite pretty. That's the same kind of same interest I have in philosophy and things like that. I quite enjoy it and it's interesting. But compared with living as open intelligence, it's literally like a, like a child's game of just rearranging things. This sort of intellectual pursuit and whole world of academia that is just... Um, it's just self-serving and self-creating. And actually what we are capable of is this life of great benefit. Far beyond any, anything you'll read in any book, apart from a few very special texts. And that's what we're training up here.